In this video, I want to show you a really cool pattern that I learned about recently that has to do with Zustan and the Context API. It basically takes some of the limitations of Zustan because as great as Zustan is as a state management library, it's not good for everything and it does have limitations and how combining it with the Context API actually solves that problem and produces a really nice pattern in your code. Now, before we get to that, I just want to mention that if you want more design patterns just like this one, I actually compiled a whole document with 10 of the most important design patterns that you have to know as a React developer. I'm offering to you completely for free. The only thing that you have to do is just join the import React newsletter, which is my free newsletter all about React. You can find it in the link below. As soon as you join, you're going to get the document directly to your inbox. Once again, it's completely for free and it has 10 of the most important design patterns that you have to know to be a great senior React developer. All right, so let's begin. Now, I just first want to give credit where credit is due. This pattern was created by TK Dodo, Dominic Dorfmeister, which is one of the maintainers of React Query. He has a great article on this. We're not going to be reading this in this video, but this is where this pattern comes from. And I just wanted to shout it out because it is a great blog article. First, what we're going to do is we're going to come here to the Zustand official website and just start with the actual default code that they provide to just get a store going and just have everything that we need to start for me to show you the actual problem and the limitation of Zustand. So I'm just going to come here and take all of this code. This is the TypeScript version of it. It has a simple counter over here. We're just going to close this. We're going to go back here to our code. Let's come here inside of SRC. Let's make a new folder, call it store. And then let's just put our file over here, count store dot ts and paste the code here directly, right? So here, what's happening over here? Oh, this has to be, yeah, let's close this. We actually don't need the actual component over here. Actually we do. No, we don't. Let, let's kill this for now. It's too much code, we don't need this. So all we're doing here, let's just export this. So we have it exported. All that we're doing, maybe count store for it to be a little bit more descriptive. And then here, let's do count store. I like to always just be more descriptive, more explicit with my things. I find it makes a little bit more, it makes it a little bit more easier when you're working with the code. So what we have here is we have our count store. It has a count property that has a number. It has an increment function that basically will just increment the state by one, right? This is the state over here. Count is initialized to one and then increment. It calls a set function from Zustand and then gets the state and then increments it by doing state.count plus one. Super simple, nothing fancy here. Now, as great as Zustand is, there's actually two problems with this. And the first problem is this count variable over here. So this essentially is global state, right? This is state that is accessible to the entire React application. And actually this state doesn't even need React to exist, right? All that we have is a simple TypeScript file and we define a function over here. And now we can just use this directly, right? We can do use count store and we can do something like get state, right? We can get the value. We can call this in any JavaScript function. We can also set the state, right? We can set a state, we can pass the values and we can update the function. We don't need React to actually have this working. This is outside of React, which on one hand is really great, right? Because now it's not tied to the React lifecycle. We can use this in any function. We're completely flexible, but there is a limitation with this. And the limitation comes, what if this count value over here needs to be initialized with some value that has been passed from props in a React component. How would we do that? Well, the short answer is we can't. So let me show you. Let's come here to our code. Let's find the app component. Let's remove, or we can just leave this over here. What we want to do is let's say that this app component actually receives over here. We're going to do type app props. And here it's going to receive initial count like this. And that is going to be a number. And here we're going to do props. Now let's do count initial initial count app props like this. How do we get this initial count, right? Which is passed from props, right? How do we get that in the count store as the initial value? Well, again, we can't. And the reason why we can't do this is because again, this is global state. This is defined outside of any React component. There is no way for us to get this initial value and then pass it and create the state because this is defined outside of the React lifecycle. So this is one of the big limitations of Zustand. If you need to define it and to initialize it with an initial value, you can't do it. The only thing that you can do is you can come here and you can do use effect, import use effect. And then here in the body of the function, let me just type it correctly. What we can do is we can just do use count store, import this like this, and then we can do set, actually set like this, set state, and then we can access, we can access the previous state and we can just do again like this, we can do prev and then we can do count initial 
count like this. That's the only thing that we can do. But there is a limitation with doing it this way. First of all, this component, this app component, will initially render with a count over here that is one, right? Because that is going to be the initial value of it. So on the first render, it's going to have here a count of one. Then this use effect is going to run. We're going to call this function. It is going to update the state. And then we're going to have a re-render of the component, which is then going to show up as the correct value as this initial count value. But this is inefficient because now we did two renders to achieve the same thing. And technically, if you really think about this, what we're doing here is we're not setting the initial count in the actual state, we're actually syncing the React lifecycle, the React state with the actual Zastan store. And this is not efficient, this is not elegant, and that's one of the limitations of Zastand. But there's also another limitation when it comes to Zastand, and that is going to be testing. So here, this is the Zastand documentation on testing. I'm just gonna show you the documentation because I don't want to write testing code over here. But essentially, because again, this store is defined globally, it's global state, it makes it really hard to actually mock it and to actually set the right data when you're running tests. And you have to write all of this boilerplate code, which honestly is super confusing, and I just don't want to see it right now but you have to write all of this code to essentially make it run, right? That is a limitation of having a global state that is outside of any React components. And here is where context comes in because using context, you can actually solve this in a really elegant way and you can get the benefits of both worlds. Now, before we get to that, I just wanna take a quick moment to really think about what it is that we're actually doing here in this video, because what we're doing is something that is called learning by doing, right? I'm actually teaching you and showing you how to implement this specific pattern in React, which is cool because that's exactly what Brilliant, the sponsor of today's video, is also doing. So Brilliant is a place where you learn by doing. You have thousands of interactive lessons in various topics, such as math, data analysis, AI, and of course, more importantly for us, programming. Brilliant is a learning platform designed to be uniquely effective. Their first principles approach helps you build understanding from the ground up. Each lesson that you have on there is filled with hands-on problem solving that lets you actually play with concepts, which is a method that has been proven to be six times more effective than watching traditional lecture videos. Plus, all of the content on Brilliant is crafted by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, and professionals from places such as MIT, Caltech, Microsoft, Google, and so much more. Brilliant helps you build your critical thinking skills through problem solving instead of memorizing. So while you're building real knowledge on specific topics, you're also learning how to become a better thinker. And they have some really, really great courses. One that I would highly recommend is one that is called Thinking in Code, which follows literally what we're doing in this video and teaches you solid foundations for computer science, which is going to directly help you as a React developer. To try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash cause and solutions, scan the QR code on screen, or simply click the first link in the description. You're also going to get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thank you once again to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. And now let's continue learning about Zastan and combining it with the context API. So let me now show you how we can get this initial count to come directly from React in terms of an actual value over here while still using all of the benefits of Zustan and everything that is great for. And now we could also theoretically do this with testing because again, I'm not gonna do any testing in this video, but how we could theoretically do this with testing. Let's get into it. So let's come here to our sidebar and let's create here a new component and we're gonna call this count provider like this, and we're gonna do TSX. Now this is going to be our context and it's gonna hold everything that is related to the context API, things that you're used to, and also things from Zustent. So first I'm gonna come here and I'm going to take this piece of code over here and I'm gonna paste the count store because we're gonna essentially be having the same store. Then I'm going to come here and I'm going to create my context. So we're gonna do const count context equals, we're gonna do create context from React, and here we're gonna pass this a really neat API. We're gonna do store API. This is coming directly from Zustand, and then we're gonna pass count store like this, and we're gonna call this function. Then we're also gonna make this optional, so we're gonna do undefined, because that is how you usually do context, and we're gonna start this as undefined like this. Now we have our count context and we can start working with it. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come here and start creating the type of our actual provider. So we can do type count provider props, and that is going to be props with children. And we're gonna have this here initial count that is going to be a number. So this is going to be the initial count that we're gonna to give to this count store as its initial value and not as a sync that we do later after the first render. Then we're gonna come here and as usual, we're gonna do export default function count provider. That is going to have children and then is going to have initial count like this. That is going to be 
account provider props. And here we're just gonna return count context dot provider and we're gonna put children in here. Now, here's the magic. Instead of taking our count store and defining it, creating it globally so that it's accessible to any component, any file, we're gonna do it in this provider instead. We're gonna use the provider to instantiate and to create our store, and it's going to live a state in this provider, and then we're gonna provide it to a subset of components that we need to use it in our application. Which honestly makes sense, right? Because some state, right, like this count store, may not be needed to be used by every single component in the app. And if that is the case, generally, you don't want to provide this to every single component if only five components in your app use it. A better solution is to just provide it to those components that use it in a subset of your React tree. That way you can guarantee that no component that shouldn't have access to this count store can access it because it's only going to be available to those components in that specific part of the tree. And for that, again, we're going to use state. So what we're going to do is we're going to do const and here we're going to do store. And that is going to be equal to use state, right? Our trusty and typical use state. And here we're going to provide this as a function. And this is very important. And now we're going to do something. We're going to do create store like this. And this is a different function. This is create store. It also comes from Zustand. It is different than create. Create store is essentially one step before the create function. Create over here is actually going to give you a custom hook, right? Create store is just going to create the store without the custom hook. This is important because we need this in our code here. And then we're going to call this here. And let me just make sure that I get the types correct. We're going to pass your bare store like this. And here we're just going to basically, essentially, let's take all of this code over here and just put it directly because that's the same code at the end of the day. And we're going to come here and we are going to paste it like so. Now, I just realized I have bear store here when it should be count store. Again, I was working with the previous example in the past. There we go. We just took the same code that we have here. We're creating the same store. The only difference is we're using create store instead of the create function, but we're passing the same type. We're using the same set function. We're passing the same values here. But now, because we have this in a component, look what we can do. Instead of count being one, we can do initial count. And now this is going to be the initial value of our store and that can come directly from the props in React, from this initial count prop. And this is really, really useful because now we get to control exactly when and where we define our store, what props goes into it, and where we make it accessible to other components in our React tree. This is better than making this accessible everywhere because first of all, it removes the limitation. We can now use props to actually initialize this and we can now explicitly control anywhere that we want to provide the store in terms of this provider to any component. This is better. And now the only thing that we have to do is come here and do value and just pass our store like this. And now we have no more type errors and we now created a count provider that we can use anywhere in our application. It gets the store and this store is only ever going to be initialized once. That's also very important. Right, because we used use state here, we passed a function here. This function is only ever going to be called once on the initial render. It is then going to set the value of the store and this is never going to change. So we're using context for what it is good for, right? We're using state, we're instantiating it and then we're controlling where we provide this, but we're also using Zustand for everything that is good for because we're not using context over here to actually track and update the state and the re-renders of the values. That's not what's happening here. This context is never going to re-render. Even if the values inside of the store changes, it is not going to re-render. What is going to re-render is the subscriptions. Once we actually use this value in any components, that is going to be rendering. So here we actually have no performance implications of using context and Zustand together. Because again, this count provider is going to get created once, this is going to get run once, and it will not re-render because we use state over here. Here. What is going to be render is the actual values of the store, but that is only going to be render through Zustand. So again, we're using Zustand for what it is good for, and we're using context for what it is good for and finding a really cool solution to the problem. Now to actually use this, we have to do one last step, which is to create and export a custom hook that is going to expose the store in a really nice way to be able to use in any component. So we can come here and we can do export function use count store. And here we're going to do a type generic. So we're going to do T over here. And this is because we're going to have to put a selector over here to actually select specific parts of the store, just like you can do in normal Zestand. So we're going to put T, then we're going to do selector. And that is going to be a function that takes the state. And this state is going to be the count store and it's going to return to us T like this. 
And then here, we're just going to do the normal traditional custom hook for a context, which we can do const context equals use context, import this from React, and then we're going to do count context like this. Then we're going to have to make a check if we don't have a context. We're going to throw a new error that is going to say count context.provider is missing right to make sure that whenever we use this we actually have a context and then what we're going to return instead of returning directly the context we're going to return use store which is a custom hook from zastan and we're going to pass this here context and then our selector like this so essentially we took the context which is our store and we just use this use store, which converts it into a custom hook. We passed it the context and then we passed it the selector. So now we're going to be able to use the use count store directly in our components. And again, this is called the same use count store. This is exactly the same thing as this one. We've just not created it ourselves. So what we can do is we can actually delete this because now we no longer need this. So let's delete the entire folder. And now in our component, instead of doing this, we can just use the count store directly that we created in our account provider. So we can come here, we can remove all of these imports. And then what we can do is we can come here and we can first wrap everything with our count provider. So we can do count provider, import this directly, and then put this over here like this. And as the initial value, right, as the initial count, we can pass initial count like this. And now our Zastan store is created using the initial count that comes from props. We're passing it over here and everything just works exactly as we expect. And actually, let me just default this initial count to five, for example, because I'm not actually passing any value from the parent of this app component. And let's now do something. Let's create another component here. Let's do function component. And this one is just going to access the store using that custom hook that we created. So we're going to do const count equals use count store. We're going to import this from the count provider. We're now going to pass a selector here, which is going to take the state and is going to give to us state dot. And here you can see everything is type safe because we properly typed this. We're going to do state dot count like this. And what we're going to do is console dot log the count. And we're just going to return null so that we don't have any type errors. And instead of this, we're just going to do a component like this. And we are going to save. See, we have no type errors. Everything should be working correctly. So now we go back here to our application. We open up the console. And what do we see? We see five in the console. This value is coming directly from our Zastan store. Everything is working. It is getting initialized properly with this initial count value that is received from props in this app component. And then we created our own custom provider. We created the store over here. We provided it to a specific subset of components. And we use this custom use count store with a selector to access specific parts of the store. It's great and it works exactly as we expect. And this is a really, really beautiful pattern. And what's even better is if you wanted to test this, again, I'm not going to do it in this video, but if you wanted to test this, we now have the choice to provide this provider, to provide any initial count that we want, or to provide something else entirely and just mock it. We don't need to do all of this complex stuff of like restoring the state, clearing the state after every test. Our code is going to be a lot simpler because we now have a really efficient pattern that combines the best of Zastan and the best of the React Context API. So there you go. This is a really, really cool pattern. And shout out once again to Dominic, right? TK Dodo for writing this article. It's a great read. I highly recommend it. I'll leave a link to this article in the description. Check it out. It is going to make you a better developer. And I'm not going to start implementing this in my own applications where it makes sense. Because again, it doesn't always make sense in every single context. It makes sense when you need to have something that is global, but only global to a specific set of components, not global to the entire application. If you need something to be global to the entire application, just use Zastan as it's normally supposed to be used and you don't need to bother with all of this extra work. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos just like this one, make sure to leave this video a big thumbs up. You can also click here to subscribe or you can click here to watch a different video of mine that YouTube seems to think that you're really going to enjoy. And with that being said, my name has been Darius Cousin. This is Cousin Solutions. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.